Nintendo's latest fighting game venture seeks to reinvent the fighting genre much like Nintendo did previously with Super Smash Bros and lower the barrier to enter into the fun that is fighting games. This is done by creating a game that focuses more on positioning, planning, and simpler inputs rather than dexterity heavy special moves and combos. This style of position based gameplay with simpler inputs isn't too unlike the frantic action of the Gundam vs series or the similarly action packed Virtual On series. Considering that, it's no surprise that those two games were listed as potential influences according to producer Kosuke Yabuki. In ARMS, you have three basic attacks, four movement or evasive options, one defensive option, and a rush attack. Your three basic attacks consist of a left jab, a right jab, and a grab. Your four movement or evasive options consist of a standard strafe around your opponent that allows your character to be moved in all directions on the ground, a quick dash, a jump that is stationary or can be moved in all directions, and an air dash that can be done in the four cardinal directions after jumping. Your defensive options consist of a block that blocks all attacks, even those that come from behind, and your rush attack unleashes a flurry of punches to potentially severely punish your opponent. These options at the player's disposal are all extremely easy to grasp and perform in an actual fight, even if the player happens to be at a lower skill level. And even, should they for some reason have difficulty, Grand Prix and the training modes can get them some practice with the fundamentals of a fight, so they can become second nature. And, as with any great fighting game, there are nuances to the basic actions, such as being able to curve your punches in various different ways depending on the arms you're using, air dashing in a direction opposite to where you're jumping, timing when you punch during a rush attack to get the most out of it and perform a combo, holding down the dash or jump button after their actions have been performed to charge up your arms to perform a stronger version of your basic attacks for a limited time, or even parrying while blocking by pressing the dash button after being attacked. These nuances ensure that players always have something new to learn or improve upon as they play. The simplicity of the game's inputs means players are more quickly able to get to the skill level required where the inputs themselves aren't the thing holding them back from victory, their own mind is. The mind games of actually outsmarting your opponent is a huge thrill in fighting games, and ARMS makes it much easier to do that. Instead of inexperienced players flailing in hopes for a win, the game helps these players feel a regression in their own skill rather than stagnation, a feeling that most other fighting games can't provide to those less proficient at them. Another facet of this game that serves as a way to lower the barrier to entry into this often tough genre to get into is the motion controls. While the game works very well with traditional controls, the motion controls are no joke and also help to give the less experienced players a simple and intuitive control scheme to start off with and grow with to become great players themselves. The motion controls also lend themselves well to the behind the back third person camera the game uses. With your motions being a direct representation of the actions on screen, the viewpoint the camera gives makes the game feel more like an action game and helps create fights that feel more visceral than your typical fighter. Now, referring back to my earlier statement about how the game focuses on positioning and planning, the way the game does this is through the various arms you can obtain by spending the money you earn in competition, the main gimmick of the character's arms having extendable arms, and the character specific attributes. Because the characters in arms have extendable arms, this means that unlike in most other fighting games, the player has to consider the travel time, travel speed, distance, and sometimes even the delay before their attacks activate, like with the dragon arms. These factors make the positioning of your character in a fight key to success against opponents. The different arms you can obtain are also important for the planning and positioning this game focuses on. The various arms in the game have different travel speeds, travel times, are classified as light, medium, or heavy arms, and have an elemental attribute that activates when charged. For example, heavy arms can punch through light and medium arms, but they move much slower than light and medium arms. It's important to consider what arms will work well together well before a fight to be able to cover all your character's weaknesses as well as fight back effectively. Character attributes is the final thing that plays a huge role in the positioning and planning during a match. The wide variety of characters and arms all have special unique attributes that pertain to their movement or defensive capabilities. Examples of this will be Twintail's trait of being able to slow down punches after dashing, giving the player a chance to counterattack, Springman's traits of deflecting punches after dashing or jumping, and his arms becoming permanently charged at 25% health to encourage daring play, and Master Mummy's traits of being slow yet powerful, with a grab that does more damage than the others. Super armor that prevents being stunned by punches, and a block that regenerates health to facilitate play that baits and punishes. All of these mechanics and variables usually would be overwhelming for a lot of players to start with in a game, especially more casual players. But due to the simplicity of the inputs required to play, ARMS is able to gradually teach you these mechanics by letting you learn as you fight and gain new arms for each character. 
Instead of overwhelming the player with the 30 different equipable arms that can specifically be equipped to each fighter at the start, they limit you to 3 arms for each fighter and let you slowly unlock more through competition so you can get acclimated to them all before getting into the real meat of strategizing good arm combos. Arguably, the method in which you obtain arms is probably too slow, but the reasoning and thought process behind why it is the way it is is understandable, even if it pads out the longevity of the game artificially in a way. But separate from the sheer mechanics of the game, one huge way ARMS lowers the barrier to entry to fighting games is the multiplayer. Online multiplayer is a huge part of modern fighting games, yet is often an unfriendly place for those who are not great at fighting games. Not because the people are rude or anything, but primarily because it's a place dominated by those who are good at the game. This is all well and good if you're wanting a challenge, but for those less experienced, it usually turns them off from the multiplayer aspect of fighting games in general. ARMS alleviates this problem greatly in its party mode where various different modes unrelated to the typical one-on-one -on -one can take place, such as V-Ball, Hoops, and Skill Shot. Where one player might dominate in a one-on-one, -on -one, another might do on any of these other modes. Team Battle, V-Ball, Skill Shot, and the versus Headlock battles in Party Mode bring cooperation into the mix, and serve as a nice way to break up the one-on-one -on -one action. Working together and using all your might to strike down the common foe is something that just feels good, especially after a difficult fight with everyone against Headlock. Cooperative elements in matches, as well as the little cheering and chanting you do while waiting in the lobby is something that makes losing not feel as bad as it does in other fighting games. Because you kind of form a little bond with the other players in the lobby. Whether that be a rivalry or perhaps an inkling of competitive kinship. Handicaps automatically given to those on a winning streak keep winners on their toes, and boosts given to losers such as a filled rush meter at the start of a match will give those having a rough time get a bit of reinvigoration. Naturally, this leads to moments where you have no hope of winning if you're dominating and have a handicap and other players have roost. But due to the casual nature of the mode, the fact that you're awarded with more money if you win with a handicap, and the fact that ranked match is there for those who want fair matches all the time, I can't say I mind it too much. Switching to the local multiplayer aspect for a second, which is also a big reason why this game has great appeal to those who aren't a fan of typical fighting games. Thanks to the versatility of the Switch, local multiplayer fun with is easy to get started, whether that be in versus mode with up to four people, or the Grand Prix that is playable with one other person. When ARMS is at its best, it's a frenetic brawl, with deliberate and calculated punches flying everywhere, explosions of color blooming on the battlefield, and opponents constantly trying to outwit each other to the last second. The brilliance of ARMS lies not only in its exceptional deliverance on its novel concept, but also in how it breaks the great barrier to enter the fighting genre has created over the years and how it helps even the inexperienced more quickly learn, grow, and triumph in the mind games that fighting games are all about. Yeah.